Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today I'm very excited to present this Throne of the Grim Captain deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This has quickly become one of my favorite decks in standard and it's all about this 2 mana legendary artifact. It can tap to mill 2 cards which will help fill the graveyard to eventually craft with a dinosaur, merfolk, pirate and a vampire which will also cost us 4 mana. So ideally we can exile these creatures from the graveyard but we might also have some of them in play which still works and then we get the Grim Captain, a 7-7 with Menace, Trample, a Lifelink and Hexproof, saying whenever the Grim Captain attacks, each opponent sacrifices an online permanent, and then we may put an exiled creature card used to craft it onto the battlefield under our control, tapped and attacking. So that's a lot of text, but in short, we just want to craft the Grim Captain and ideally attack with it right away, and that likely wins us the game. And we can use a Bitter Union, sacrifice it for one mana to give our team haste as a way of letting our Grim Captain attack the turn we crafted, which can also make a big difference, helps us play around sweeper effects by immediately connecting and maybe taking out our opponents. So what creatures are we trying to cheat into play with our Grim Captain? Well, there's some expensive dinosaurs, Galta and Mavern, one of them, and it also happens to be a vampire. So this having two of those creature types is very helpful, means we can craft either as a dinosaur or as a vampire, which is quite flexible, and then we'll be able to put a 12-12 trampler into play that can immediately hit the opponent and hopefully close out the game. And then if we do get to untap with it, it can still provide a lot of value by making additional dinosaur tokens or life-linking vampires instead. Although we don't get that trigger the turn we cheated to play with our Grim Captain, since it's already tapped and attacking. So Galta Mavern was one of the main reasons why I wanted to try this Naya approach, as opposed to maybe a Grixis color combination, where blue gives us access to lots of pirates, which can be quite good, and then of course black has access to a lot of vampires. Instead here we still have some vampires with Galta Mavern, red also gives us access to Voldaren Epicure, which is perfect as a cheap creature that can help us discard and draw with a blood token. So that's another way of discarding some of our expensive creatures like Galtam Mavern, so we can later craft with our throne while still digging towards more of the combo pieces. And then besides Galta Mavern, we also have two copies of Gishoth. I'm using the original art here. A 7-6 Vigil Strample Haste. If it hits the opponent, we can reveal that many cards from the top of our library and put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them straight onto the battlefield. So that can potentially put a Galta Mavern into play. We also have two copies of Kogla and Yidaro, which is quite flexible as a 4-mana ability that can destroy artifacts or enchantments while drawing a card. And then we can also use it as a 6-mana creature that can fight or maybe come into play with Trample and Haste until end of turn, and then if we put this into play with our Grim Captain, it can also immediately fight as a 7-7, which is quite helpful. And then the Trumpeting Carnosaur also has excellent synergy as a 3-man ability that lets us deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, and then also ends up in our graveyard, where we can then later craft it with our Throne of the Grim Captain. Sadly, Kogla and Yidaro gets shuffled back into our deck, so we wouldn't be able to craft it if we use the ability, but Carnosaur does. And then if we put this in play, we also get to discover 5, which can maybe find more goodies. So those are all the dinosaurs taken care of, so we've got a pretty high density, and that also makes our Gishoth pretty pretty exciting if we do manage to hit the opponent. And then with our current mana it's also possible for us to eventually hard cast Gishoth and Galta Mavern. We've got two copies of Jetmir's Garden which makes white mana, and then of course Cavern of Souls, often naming Dinosaur, can eventually help us cast these expensive creatures which will then also be uncounterable, which is nice when facing the more controlling decks. And then as far as Merfolk are concerned, we've got some nice green Merfolk with the Scout at one mana, which explores when it enters, so helpful at putting additional cards into our graveyard for our throne, and then it can also help hit our land drops perhaps, and both those modes are useful. And then we also have two copies of the Sentinel, which will make a map token when it enters or attacks, so that's another way of helping us explore. Explore not only synergistic alongside Throne, but also quite synergistic alongside our enterprising Scallywag. And we've got six red pirates in this deck, since we can't get access to the blue pirates in this build, but Scallywag is perfect as a 2-2 saying at the beginning of our end step, if we descend it this turn, create a treasure token, and we can descend in a multitude of ways. Just milling ourselves with Throne is enough to descend. We can descend by exploring cards into our graveyard if we don't hit a land. The blood tokens from Epicure discarding a card will also do it. And then the Carnosaur discarding to deal 3 damage can also enable descent to make a treasure token out of turn. So there's plenty of synergy throughout. Could even get it done with our Bitter Union going into the graveyard after sacrificing it, although we're typically saving it to give our Grim Captain haste. 
Now I will note that sacrificing a treasure does not enable descent, while it does enable revolt. Descent specifically needs a card to end up in the graveyard and not a token, so a blood token discarding a card does it, but a treasure token by itself does not. Now we also have two more red pirates here, Breaches, Eager, Pillager, a 3-3 first strike saying whenever a pirate we control attacks we get to choose one that hasn't been chosen between making a treasure token, preventing a creature from blocking, or we can exile the top card and plate this turn. So curving a Scallywag into Breaches can also immediately make a treasure token. And Breaches also works very nicely alongside the Grim Captain. Once we craft it, it turns into a Skeleton Spirit Pirate. So it still counts as a pirate to synergize with Breaches, and the most we're going to use most often at that point is to prevent creatures from blocking so they can't easily double or triple block our grim captain so we can keep attacking with it to keep getting more and more value so that combination can also come up and then the mana base as we mentioned cavern of souls can be quite useful naming our various creature types although typically going for dinosaur and then we've got more red green dual lands for mana fixing no real need for creature lands in this deck since we have other ways to spend our mana but i'm still happy to have a few channel lands here for added interaction so that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw missing our throne but uh i don't hate this hand if Scallywag survives, Carnosaur can help make a treasure. Reunion is another way to enable Descend. And then Kogla could also get it done. Okay, up against the red aggro, so this is going to be a tough matchup. Especially on the draw. Don't expect Scallywag to survive, and by the time we can deal three, we're already going to be very low on life. But I guess it's worth a shot. If they take out Scallywag, they're not dealing as much damage. And yeah, we could also trade for Adversary. Although the extra treasure could certainly come in handy. So we'll take the hit for now. And they might take out Scallywag regardless. Could also imply Monstrous Rage. Which could have just trampled over the Scallywag. Okay, there it is. And there's the Lightning Strike going upstairs. All right, so we're down to five. I guess we have to do this now if we want a treasure token. Take out adversary. And then I might be forced to block Swiss Spear here. Epicure puts us to four. And it's a Witch Talker Frenzy. Alright, so we're at two. Can play Scout and then still use Carnosaur to take out Swiss Spear, so we're technically alive, but any burn spell is game over. Throne, yeah, that's what we want. Although, is it going to be too little too late? Sure, I guess we'll pass. They could also top deck Godric, for instance. Or Squee. Kumano, yeah, that's gonna put me to one here. I guess we'll wait for them to attack all out. So we can ambush the Apicure. So we're not dead yet. But about as dead as we can be while still being in the game. Could also use Kongla and Hidaro to blow up Kumano. But uh, yeah, I think we'd need to get our throne down. And then next turn, hope to transform it. Bitter Union can discard Gishoth in the meantime. Since we're definitely not casting it. And the land is good, so is an extra blocker. And we've got everything in place to also give haste with Bitter Union, so if we actually can dodge a burn spell here, we should be able to block most creatures, and then next turn we can attack with a huge lifelinker, since we've got every creature type, dino, vampire, pirates, and merfolk. Alright, so don't want to get my hopes up, but we've got a chance. Opponent does get a redraw with the blood token. They drew Frenzy, that doesn't do it. Alright, are we dead?
Pause for suspense. Bones looking at the graveyard. Well, we're still not dead, so I guess that's good. Take our turn. Mill two cards. And then craft. And then... How about a nice Gishoth? Merfolk, Pirates. And then we're still missing a Vampire, I guess. Voldaire and Epicure will do. Could have also, I suppose, discarded Galtan Mavern. Um, and then been able to put that in play as my Vampire. But. Getting to it with Gishalth is more fun, and now that we're at 8, we shouldn't be dead next turn to a burn spell. And now we get to put Galta and Carnosaur into play. So I think this was the better value play, even though we could have won the game right now. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a Keeper. Throne plus Scallywag can make a few treasures. And hopefully we don't need to play around a counterspell on turn 2. With Cavern we can make sure some of our creatures resolve. And now consider... Does Delver transform? If they can transform it, it would represent a lot of early pressure. Can eventually try and take it out with Carnosaur. For now, luckily, it remains a 1-1. And a sleight of hand for more card selection. Opponent likely playing with Tolarian Terror, which they can cheaply deploy. Alright, I don't think we show them Cavern yet, since they might keep up a Counterspell. And then I think we start by Resolving Throne. And then next turn, with Cavern naming Pirates, I could make sure Scallywag resolves. Or we can use the Carnosaur. And this is an ability, so not something they can counter with most regular Counterspells. So our goal is just to get as many creature types in the graveyard as quickly as possible. Reunion can give our Grim Captain haste. So, yeah. So far, we're off to a reasonable start. Getting to resolve that throne is huge. And Mono Blue's gonna struggle to get rid of an artifact once in play. Delver's still just a 1 1. But we might see another creature join it soon here. And uh, yeah, there's Hadi Jin. That one sadly survives Carnosaur. Okay, so a couple options. Could resolve Bitter Union, discarding either Epicure or Scallywag, just to again make sure we resolve this as kind of a unique effect. And then hang on to Carnosaur to try and answer Delver, or I could take it out now while the shields are down in case they have a protection spell to save it from the three damage. All reasonable options. I guess it doesn't hurt to start by milling. Give us a bit more info. Milled two lands. So we have Vampires aplenty, Pirate, Dinosaur. Still missing Merfolk. So getting the extra treasure here from Scallywag might still be worth it. So let's try that. And play Epicure. And then next turn, if we get lucky, we could already craft the... Grim Captain. Although it's going to be without haste. Delver's still a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, had it transformed on turn 1, it could have dealt quite a bit of damage in the meantime. Second Haughty Gen is scary. So next turn especially is going to hurt. But our opponent likely has a counter spell available here. And another Delver. Alright, there's our Merfolk, so I could discard it with a Blood Token, and then craft the Throne already. Start by milling, see if we mill a Merfolk instead. No, we don't. So yeah, I think it's going to be Blood Token, craft, as opposed to Carnosaur, take out a Delver, and then I can still discard Sentinel, or I guess even better is play Reunion. Discarding Sentinel, and then use Carnosaur to take out a Delver. Double Haughty Gin, Delver transforming. Let's say they put 
three instances of sorceries in the graveyard, we would still be taking 13, that's not lethal. And then next turn we can craft and give haste. I think that's the sequencing I prefer. Can keep my cavern secrets for the time being. And let's do it while they're tapped out. Could also, I suppose, attack with a scallywag, although then I miss out on the treasure, do we mind? I guess it's reasonable to attack with a scallywag here. Still have Epicure to block Delver. If it doesn't transform. And I would be pretty happy to take out Hodijin. Even though we now don't get a treasure, I'll still have Land 5 to craft and give haste. And I think on average, Hodijin would be dealing more damage than Delver, even though they could transform it. But they don't. Alright, so we got pretty lucky here to dodge a transformation. Also implies that the opponent has drawn lots of lands and creatures. We've seen plenty of the creatures so far. And there's another land and a Tolerant Terror. Opponent's fully tapped out. And this is going to be a glorious. So this can name Dinosaur. And mill a couple more cards. Craft. And then we've got a dinosaur, a merfolk, pirates, a vampire. Not the biggest creatures ever, but still good enough here. Give haste. And smash. Opponent likely wants to trade for the Grim Captain by triple blocking. Which means Epicure is going to go unblocked, and then Carnosaur can put more into play with the ability. So opponent had to sacrifice Hodijin to make that trade happen. Carnosaur hits Epicure. So as the dust settles, we're going to be at 21 life with a Carnosaur and a pair of Epicures in play. And then next turn we can play another Carnosaur, which will be uncounterable. So all in all, not bad. A Ledger Shredder is a bit late to the party, times two. With the Discover, I guess we would be casting a second spell. Could just use it to take out a Shredder instead of casting it and Discovering. But yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand is keepable. Although Cavern of Souls will have to name Vampire and Pirates so we can cast our spells. Probably want to play a turn to throne anyways. So we can uh, immediately make a treasure with Descend once we play Scallywag. Less likely to eat a removal spell that way. Turn one mountain. So red aggro, presumably. Play with fire on Epicure, love to see that. So this one will name Pirate. I think that makes more sense than Goblin in this deck. Although I guess I haven't double-checked if there's any non-pirate goblins. I don't think so. Can't wait on milling with throne. Adversary's gonna hit us for two. Alright. So we just want to keep hitting our land drops with Scallywag. A treasure also helps. A blood token can discard Galtai Mavern at some point as well. So let's think about it. Got our Scallywag. We'll get a treasure. We've got a vampire, pirates, can discard a dino, so we're still missing merfolk. So if I mill a uh, merfolk randomly with the uh, two cards next turn, we could technically already craft. I guess I'm still better off just playing a tapped garden. Can always next turn discard with a blood token and craft, thanks to the treasure. Was just debating whether or not I wanted to play an untapped land there. And I'll take two. I think the extra treasure is still helpful in case we need to hard cast some of our dinosaurs. And Monstrous Rage, of course, always a possibility. So we'll take five. Thirteen. Take our turn. And a better union. Okay, so start by milling. See what's up. 
no merfolk in sight. So now, Bitter Union discard Galtam Mavron. Hope to find a cheap merfolk. And then uh, we should be able to play it. And then at the very least, the next turn I could cast a 6-mana Kogla and Hidaru. Another Throne. Could play it, it is legendary, but just to mill two cards. Is that worth it? I'm unlikely to gonna need two of them. But I could also just use a Blood Token here, discarding... Either Forest or Throne, probably Throne. Definitely a close call, since milling those two extra cards could matter. Found a Copperland Gorge, alright. So, we might fail to transform our Throne. Still keeps Caliwag back to hold off the Mishra's Foundry. Now that we got our treasure, I don't really mind trading it. At the very least, we get to play Kogla and Hidaro next turn. Opponent waited to take out Scallywag, perhaps a mistake. And there's a Foundry getting in for an extra 2 damage. If our opponent has all burn spells in hand, we could still be in trouble. But for now we should stabilize nicely. Just gonna fight. I suppose I should have checked to see if we got a merfolk in the graveyard with Throne first. If we did, I might regret this play. Alright, no merfolk, so did not make a difference. Because yeah, if we did mill a merfolk, gaining 7 would have been a pretty big deal. Play with fire end of turn. So yeah, they've got two more of those burn spell, we're just dead. Would have to be a Lightning Strike and play with fire. Okay, no attack, so they probably have at least one burn spell in hand. Can we mill a Merfolk? And no Merfolk. We've got Epicure to discard and draw with the Blood Token. And another Kogla and Hidaro could also get rid of the Mishra's Foundry. So at this point, Kogla and Hidaro are just gonna attack for seven. Alright, let's see for dead. And of turn burn spell, I'm sure. Nope, Crucible making a pair of one ones. Okay, so can block one of them with Epicure. Mishra's Foundry is gonna get busy. So we'll wait for that to tap and then try and destroy it. Could still be dead to a Monstrous Rage. Still gonna block the 1-1 one because -one, otherwise I would be dead to a Lightning Strike. So now we're not necessarily dead to just a monstrous rage. Find Carnosaur. I guess next turn I can play it and give it haste with Bitter Union. But first let's see if we can finally hit a Merfolk. There we go, alright. Now it's go time. We've got... Galta Mavron, we've got Gishoth, Pirate, and Merfolk. And give the team haste. And an attack for 26 should suffice. Awesome, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is still missing a throne. We have Vampire, Pirates, and Dinosaur slash Vampire. 
So a decent mix of creature types. I think we'll try it. We've got a bit of card selection here with the Blood Token and Bitter Union, so we can maybe find a throne. And yeah, hopefully we'll be able to pull it off. And there we go, thrown off the top, perfect. So now I'm kind of liking a throne, and then next turn a Scallywag can immediately make a treasure. We can wait until end of turn to mill ourselves. In case of some graveyard hate. Drew Epicure, land would have been better. So maybe instead of playing Scallywag into potential removal, we can Bitter Union and then hope to hit our land drop that way, since we do need to get up to four. And then Galtai Mavern can go for now. No land still, that's unfortunate. Okay, pass it back. And a wedding announcement, so opponent a slow mid-range deck, perhaps. Mill two lanes. But drew one as well. Alright, so we're still in the game. Now we get to make some treasure. I think I prefer Scallywag over Breaches. And then Epicure. And then we want to make sure to mill ourselves here. Get our treasure. And then with a land, we could also give haste with Bitter Union. We've got all the creature types we need. And I'm fine with the trade, although keeping the Epicure could help play around a Shielder's Edict. So I'll take the one. Did find a land, perfect. So first we want to mill, and then we can craft. And then have a look at our graveyard here. So this could be either dinosaur or vampire. I guess we'll grab a, a dinosaur here. Pirates and merfolk. Our creature will have Hexproof and Haste as well, thanks to Bitter Union. Just gonna send the Grim Captain, Epicure can stay back. And then we'll put something big into play here. Sadly, Kogla and Hidaro cannot destroy enchantments when they enter the battlefield. But uh, we'll just go for Galta and Mavern, see if they have an answer at instant speed here. Maybe you go for the throat. They do. Alright, that's too bad, so we don't instantly just win the game, but we're still in great shape. Unless a sunfall happens. Attack for one. Guess we'll take it. Keep playing around an edict. And an Elishnorn for seven. Okay, now a five eight. So Elishnorn does shut down quite a few of our abilities. Although Breaches is an attack trigger and the Grim Captain is indeed a pirate, so can prevent Elish Norn from blocking. So we'll start there. Now putting Kogla and Yudaro in play is not going to help us fight. But it does still put a nice large creature into play, which is probably fine. Opponent can jump, take seven. Otherwise this would have been game over, just fight the token and get in for 14. And then Epicure also doesn't trigger with Elish Nord in play, so maybe just sack a blood token here. See if we find anything else exciting. A totally functional draw here from the Amzan mid-range deck, but yeah, the Grim Captain just too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw here with a very promising hand. Epicure turn to Throne. We've got Vampire, Merfolk, Dino, just missing Pirate. 
Now I guess we'll go for Scout. If it turns into a 2-2 with Explorer, it might be able to hold off some hasty creatures from the opponent. And then I don't really need a second throne. Don't expect my first one to get destroyed. Even though it's the most important card in the deck, don't really need to in most circumstances. So we've got our 2-2 Scout. Play with Fire takes it out. So now it's going to be thrown on 2. Turn 3 Sentinel as a good blocker. And then, yeah, hope to mill a pirate at some point. And then hopefully turn 4 we can transform. And turn 5 we can gain 7 to stabilize. They've got one of those hard-hitting 3 drops. We could still be in quite a bit of trouble. Just going to be an adversary for now. Okay. Can we mill a pirate? Not yet. Can we find one now? Still no pirate. I also still have a dinosaur and vampire in hand here that I would like to discard, so might have to use a blood token to get there. Is this a two mana witch docker frenzy? It is. Sentinel down, take three. So mill two more. So still no pirates, plenty of merfolk, nothing else in the graveyard really. So that's not ideal. But uh, start with the scouts, can still play double Epicure. Probably want to play Boseju so we don't take any damage. Another throne can go. Could also explore with a map token, which at this point I don't hate. Making scout into a 3-3 means I'll have to lightning strike to get past it. And then put this in the graveyard since we're pretty far from casting it. And then probably go for another epicure. That way if they do take out scout I can still double block adversary to try and stem the bleeding. And yeah, hopefully we'll find a pirate at some point, can discard Galta Mavern with a blood token. There's a lightning strike. And the attack. So we're not too upset being at 9 still. Opponent kind of struggling to hit her land drops. Now we could bit her union and then set up a hasty captain. I guess it still doesn't hurt to mill first. Alright, so still no pirate. Do I play Epicure? I think we are at the point where we discard with a blood token. Might want to hang on to Carnosaur. Still haven't hit my land drop for the turn, so I think I will be discarding Epicure now. In case we can find a land. Call Time Avern. I wouldn't be needing those. So that can also be discarded. And find Kogla and Hidaro. Alright, so not the best string of cards. Scallywag off the top, so that is our pirates, although we wouldn't be able to craft right now. So let's see if we can mill one instead. Just a merfolk. So now go for Scallywag, make a treasure end of turn, and then I can still use the Carnosaur to maybe take out Felden, although that would exile three cards, which is not ideal. So hopefully we don't have to. I'm fine if Scallywag dies, as long as it doesn't get exiled. And then with the extra treasure, we would be able to give haste next turn. This could be a monstrous rage. All right, so let's think about this. Opponent would be trampling for three, four, five, down to one. But then next turn we can craft and give haste. So I don't actually think we want to Carnosaur in response. I guess there is a risk that our opponent exiles a land and has a play with fire to finish us off. That's a concern since we will be dealing 2 damage to Felden. Whereas if we use Carnosaur, I only take 2 damage, I get to keep Scallywag, but then we're not guaranteed to gain 7 next turn. Close call. Maybe it is still Carnosaur here, because I might just be dead right now if they have land into play with fire.
but I'm probably interested in the extra land here. And then we'll at the very least have a 7-7 lifelink on the ground on defense. Doesn't help against the Flying Phoenix Chicks. And yeah, that's now the situation. So no fifth land. Can craft, but it's probably not going to help against Flying Creatures and a Burn Spell. And uh, I'll also have to craft the uh, Scallywag, so may as well attack with it first. So I'm not loving my chances, so our opponent probably has another Monstrous Rage or Burn Spell in hand. So this is our Vampire. Let's make this our Dinosaur in case we need removal. Merfolk. And then our only Pirate. So we've got a Grim Captain, but it's sadly a creature on the ground that our opponent can fly over. We're fine if our opponent has a bunch of three mana creatures in hand, can block those all day. But Monstrous Rage, Play with Fire are the cards we want to avoid. Lightning Strike, of course. And there's a Lightning Strike. All right, that's too bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand is fine. Turn one, Scout. Turn two, Throne. We're a bit light on other creature types here besides Merfolk, but at least the Explore mechanic can help us fill the graveyard and there's our Dinosaur already. And Throne also naturally helps fill the graveyard. Another Mono Red deck, still very popular despite the new set dropping. So this can name Dinosaur. Play Throne. I'll keep Scout back on defense. And then hope to mill, I guess, Vampire as the remaining creature type. Assuming these end up in the graveyard. Happy to trade for Adversary. Alright, found another Vampire or Dinosaur. And then now... Sentinel is the more reliable blocker. Although Breaches can maybe help generate a treasure, which in turn makes it easier to deploy the rest of my hand. I guess I can start by milling. Alright, so... Yeah, close call. Let's go with Breaches. Likely dies to a Lightning Strike, but I'm okay with it. Means next turn I can play Sentinel and immediately sacrifice a map token, which is pretty efficient. And if Breaches does survive, we can maybe put that extra treasure token to use. And if our opponent's taking out Breaches, they're not developing their own board. There's a Lightning Strike. So now we've got a Pirate in the Graveyard. Yeah, we've got all four types already, so I could just transform a turn four Grim Captain. And that seems to be the play, even though next turn I can give haste. Don't see a reason to wait here, really. So we've got Dinosaur, Vampire, Pirates, and Merfolk. And good luck to the Mono Red deck. Our creature has Hexproof, so it's not like they can even steal it to attack us back. No Edict effects to get rid of it, no Sweepers that deal enough damage. So they just need to deal 17 damage here, pretty much. And I don't see that happening. And our opponent explodes. They don't even want to see the new cards in action. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and while we're missing a throne, our hand still seems functional enough. With lots of early plays. Our Merfolk to help hit our land drops, Breaches can make treasure. And then we've got all types already, if we do eventually find Throne. Let's see what we're up against. Forests and a Lore Keeper, so Dinosaurs with turn 1 Lore Keeper can be quite scary. Start with a Scout. And a Bitter Reunion, I guess is a fine draw for next turn. Can discard Coggle Antidaru, or maybe... 
some of our other creatures if we want to hold this as something we can hard cast. And next turn they can already play a 4 mana dinosaur. Yeah, let's go digging for extra lands, I think. Could also hang on to my untapped land for next turn to make sure we play Sentinel or Breaches. For now, just go Epicure tap land, which is certainly reasonable, but we also need to be digging actively towards our throne, which is probably the only way we can overpower the dinosaurs. And we need to do so in a timely fashion. We're also pretty likely to find an untapped land with the three extra draws. So let me discard... Maybe a Sentinel. Breaches having first strike is actually quite relevant against the, uh, I think it's the Hulking Dinosaur. That's a 5-3 that can add extra mana. We did find Throne, so that's nice. And a Hammer Skull's next. Although we can still trade for Scout, which I'm happy to do. So we've got Merfolk in the graveyard. For now, and Breaches doesn't block Hammer Skull all that well, so I don't mind Epicure as a chum blocker and then a Throne to start milling. And then if we get really lucky, we could already craft next turn, but I'm not counting on it. If we can do it turn 5 and give haste with Bitter Union, that would still maybe be fast enough. So we'll see. If they can remove the Epicure, we're taking quite the beating. And our opponent can play a 5 mana Dino here. But looks like Hammer Skull is going to be stunned. So they must not have another Dinosaur. Never mind, Drakosaur's second main, so our opponent's still getting used to the new cards. Should have played that first to avoid the stun counter. Well, the Drakosaur is still kind of its own problem. We've got a Vampire and Merfolk in the graveyard. So let's see if we can add any other types. Dinosaur, so... We're just missing Pirate now. So Breaches we might want to discard to the Blood Token. Or we can just, of course, cast it and then next turn craft with it in play, which is not quite as exciting to be fair. So maybe we uh, use the Carnosaur, take out Lorekeeper to deny mana, play a land, use Blood Token, discard Breaches, but then I would still need an untapped land to give haste next turn with a Bitter Union. So maybe the safest play is just tap land, play Breaches, make sure we have that Pirates to craft with. And then, yeah, hopefully we can take over with a hasty Grim Captain, but it's not necessarily a guarantee. Keeping Breaches around would also help with our Grim Captain preventing something from blocking. Can be relevant, especially with multiple Dracosaurs back on defense. A Raptor punishes people for playing spells outside of their turn. And take five. So ideally we can mill another pirate here with Throne before we craft. We drew a pirate, not quite the same. Alright, so still only the pirate in play or in hand. If I use the blood token then I'll be short of giving haste. So I think we need to go ahead and craft and attack with haste. And then I'll be able to put Gishoth into play. Our opponent can double block my Grim Captain, but then Gishoth connects and hopefully takes over. Yeah, let's go for it. And then next turn we might still have a reasonable follow-up. So probably no point in exiling Sentinel, since we're going to lose our Grim Captain. But we're also facing quite a bit of damage on the way back here, so if we don't find a Dinosaur with Gishoth, we might just be dead. 
Hammer Skull gets to untap. And if we did still have breaches, we can uh, prevent the Raptor from blocking here. And then things are looking pretty alright. We'll gain 7 up to 18. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Opponent actually triple blocks Gishoth. So now I regret not exiling the Merfolk. Okay, so they get to take out Gishoth. We still trample for one damage, so we could get lucky and top deck a Dino. Just a mountain. But now we still have our Grim Captain. Next turn... We might be able to play Kogla, but we'll need a land. And this Triumphant Chomp, while it can deal six, doesn't have any targets. So hit us for 11. And we get to untap. Did not draw what we were hoping for. So attack with Grim Captain, put in Breaches. That's one shy of lethal. If I discard something with a blood token, we get a redraw. I guess we might as well. See what else we find. An Epicure, that's one damage. So now if I use Carnosaur to clear the 3 1, put in Breaches, hit for 10, then Epicure can finish them off, assuming there's no interaction here. They might have some insta speed removal, but Chomp is a sorcery, so that doesn't do it. So we'll give it a shot. They might have their own Carnosaur here to take out Breaches. But they don't. Falls to one. And Ambicure to close out the game. Awesome, so very close one here against Dinosaurs, and we get to rank up as well. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing a red source to cast Bitter Union, no Throne either. Bit of a draw and discard with Reunion, if we can eventually cast it. Curving Scallywag into Breaches can be nice, as we get to immediately make treasure. So it's a close call. Definitely not perfect. I think we mulligan since any opening hand with Throne is going to be so much better. No Throne, but lots of draw and discard. So I'll try it. And then Carnosaur vs. Bitter Union to put on the bottom here. I guess we want to keep a bit of interaction. Even though a second Bitter Union could help find Throne more consistently. So not the best start. Pretty low on resources. Up against turn one mountain. Alright, scout can help. I think we still play the reunion here. And maybe just discard scout, keep Carnosaur to take out a creature. And the land to be able to discard it in the first place. Even though scout could have provided a bit of card advantage. And then... Epicure doesn't really block any hasty creatures from the opponents if they're on mono red. Scallywag plus a blood token can make a treasure. Felden hits us for two. Not really something we want to deal three to. So I think it's going to be Scallywag plus blood token here. And then now Epicure probably wants to hang back. Can also sack Reunion just to enable Descend. So we can make another treasure, maybe cast Carnosaur on the following turn. Although that would be the case either way. Could double block to play around Monstrous Rage. Would still lose both creatures, but at least Felden dies. Um. And then they might just take out Scallywag with a Burn Spell. Epicure deals one to Felden. Could get pretty messy. I think we take it, and then next turn we can maybe consider that block while we have Carnosaur available. Or we can just use Carnosaur to enable Descent, which is also reasonable. Play with Fire goes upstairs. And opponent goes for a Monstrous Rage, so... 
Double block would have been pretty painful. Alright, so we can play scouts, see if that enables the scent for us so we can keep Carnosaur as an instant. And a throne is perfect, so hang on to that one. So now I still need to enable Descend, so I will use Carnosaur now, even though it triggers Felden. So we've got Dinosaur, Merfolk, Vampire, Pirate, so that's all types. With a treasure I'll be able to play Throne, Transform and give haste with a land, so yeah, we're looking good, especially if Scallywag survives here. And I'm okay attacking all out here. Okay, so I'm liking my position. Don't have the biggest dinosaurs to cheat on the battlefield, but putting a Carnosaur in play is good enough. Godric with Monstrous Rage can enable Celebration. Phoenix Chick can do so as well. Take five. Next turn, they could be presenting lethal, but we've got something to say about it. And then a throne could also mill something big. And maybe keep some of our creatures on the battlefield. Doesn't look like it. So crafts. And those extra treasures are coming in handy. So we've got Merfolk, a dinosaur, pirate, a vampire. And yeah, 14 plus 2 is still going to be a lethal here. Make sure we give haste before attacking. It would be a shame not to. And then we get to discover with a Carnosaur. Hitting an epic here. Alright, GG's. It's another close game against Moderates, managing to assemble the Grim Captain just in time. And uh, yeah, even on the Mulligan, so even if we don't have our Grim Captain's throne in our opening hand, we can still find it, thanks to Explore, thanks to the Blood Tokens, Bitter Union. So there's quite a few ways to cycle through the deck and then eventually find our throne. And by that time, we should have enough things in Graveyard to craft and hopefully with Bitter Union attack as well. So yeah, we got to showcase our Grim Captain's deck quite nicely, and I'm very happy that it can compete with Monorvet Aggro, which will remain a popular deck in the best of one ladder for some time, as people still need to acquire the new cards. So don't expect that matchup to go away anytime soon, but it seems like at least getting that 7-7 lifelinker in play is a good way to beat them. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!